Night every dumpster. Time. I'm not technically, you can't see me. Joined, as always, the beautiful, the talented, the funny, the smart, Aww. Lady Columbia. Hello, sweet, everyone. Sweet it's your girl, baby. Columbia. How are you? I'm fine. Let's get into it. Yeah, I can talk right into the mic. That's my job. There we go. Now everybody can see you. They can see no. me. I'm very red because this I'm shit's red awesome. on the screen. Well, I uh, see. I, I can we keep this lighting? Red works for you. Yeah, like orange candle lighty works for me. The, my poor baby though, he looks like a look like a jack o' lantern. Or something. Make it look like a tomato. Cool. I like tomatoes. So of course, you know, at some point we're gonna talk about the election, but first we gotta get the show on the road, like. You just want to jump right into it? Is that what we're I doing? mean, I'm so tired. Who else? Like, I know your bed ain't here yet. Who else is just tired? Like, I want this to on it over. Strap in, baby. It's going to be a long ride. Mm. I'm going to be doing this till January. Somebody going to be, if, if they don't, listen, it better be a consolation prize. Trump better get dragged out by his hair. Mm-hmm. And that shit ain't a wig, despite what we may all think. Yeah, I don't... That shit is not a wig, and, like, <laughs> he needs to get a wig made. Yeah. On life. Because it looks terrible. Hey, Yvette. <clears throat> hey, Yvette. Hi, darling. How are you? Are you tired? Are you tired of election and politics yet? Woo. This election will not end ever. This is the election that will not end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. <clears throat> But yeah, so clearly, like Biden's gonna win, and then Trump's gonna sue, and there's gonna be recounts, and it's gonna go until January. So that'll be fun. Yay! But we pretty much stand exactly where we stood on election night with like five or six states. Um, Is it so? Undeclared. Mm-hmm. Um. On and on and on and on. Don't stop believing. Yeah. My baby's a drunk white girl at karaoke now. Uh, I was... Wait, now? I think I was always that. You just covered up for my deficiencies. Yeah. Your your parents, honey, are hopefully wrong. Now I love you, and I only and I only love them because they made you. I don't know I nothing mean, about them, though. No. They're definitely wrong as of right now. Um, <clears throat> I suppose anything's possible after lawsuits and recounts, but there's almost no way for Trump to win right now. Like he has almost no path to victory. Yeah. He would need to take every state that's still on the board, except I think Nevada. I won't that's believe it. I will not believe it until it happens. That I won't believe Biden is president until it happens. Yeah, let's get drunk and do karaoke. Cause I, I, it depends on what. Like I've fucked my voice with with so many packs of cigarettes, but you know, good night. You know, I can still, I can still bust it out. <clears throat> um, we looked into that. Um. We don't think so, necessarily. So, it was reported by a very spurious paper in the United Kingdom, The Sun. Mm-hmm. Um, it, no one else reputable has reported it as of um, yet. A, a lot of U.S. outlets audio. are sort of like, eh, we don't know. <clears throat> um, is Putin resigning? We'll know when he resigns. So, apparently, the, the Russian legislature, whatever the fuck it's called. The is, Kremlin. They just call it the Kremlin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently they're, um... Doesn't okay, have, Nail! <laughs> doesn't it have, like, an actual name, though? That's, like, the building. It's the Kremlin. Okay. That's what, that's what they call it. I'm pretty sure it has, like, another name. I don't think they still call it the Politburo. No, not that. But, you know... But in any case, they're apparently drafting some sort of legislation that will protect any former presidents from being... Prosecuted, uh, prosecuted for life. So... Here's my thing, though. That's kind of why people think maybe he's resigning. He gonna, he gonna resign. People but say he got Parkinson's. He's, or something, he's right? got Parkinson's. Yeah. Well, the the report is that he has Parkinson's. Yeah. But he but if he does see, but if he does have Parkinson's, he will resign because he can't afford to be shaken in public. No yeah. offense to people who have Parkinson's. All right. He's not. Let me put it this: Vladimir Putin does not have the strength of character of Michael J. Fox. Okay. Let's let's keep that out there. 
Who does, really? That man, he went through so much. Mm -hmm. He still shows up to party. He still shows up. And I'm proud of him. I'm so proud. I just, if Trump loses equivocally, though, he might resign. I, what, are you talking about Putin? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. No, Trump, Trump's not going to fucking, Trump would only resign if, like, oh, Lord. Oh. What's your boy getting up to now? I have no idea. Um, I'm sure he's canceled for that. But he's already been canceled a long time ago, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure Melania is excited about... I'm sure she's happy to be leaving the White House, but, like, don't get it twisted. She's just as bad as he is, really. Yeah, yeah, but... But she didn't. Mel, she didn't want see, this life. But, but here, Mel. Mel had her opportunity to redeem her character with the American people. She Thank still you. does have that opportunity. Release them taxes, girl. Mm. Your name on them taxes. I'll write a tell all something. <clears throat> fucking squeal on this no, punk. No, no. You fucking give me his taxes. Your name is on them taxes. You're releasing your tax returns, which also happen to be his tax returns. That's if she does that shit. We Melania Trump is good for the American people. We ain't going. We ain't going to pretend like she not. But we'll she, let you stay. We won't deport you. But she, that bitch is a coward. Mm-hmm. That bitch is a coward because she still want to stay married to that nigga. She still want that nigga's money, which he don't got. But, all right, we can talk more politics later. Let's let's get let's this watch movie this started. Movie. My fucking mm-hmm. head hurt. So tonight we are watching Firecracker. It is, I believe, a 1981 martial arts movie. Uh, our main character is a busty blonde who is apparently a real martial artist, uh, though you couldn't tell it by the fight scenes in this movie. So, not that we've watched the whole movie, but I, you know, skimmed some bits and pieces, and uh, it looks great. This better be good, my dude. Because I, I simultaneously... See, here's what I love. I I have both the highest rated movie and the worst rated movie in the catalog. That's an honor. I guess I believe this is set in the Philippines. <clears throat> They're the ones that do the stick fighting, right? This nigga racist. Nunchucks. Why is everybody just like flaring at this guy? Oh shit, now he's just got a di- whole ass different weapon. Oh god. That's a different guy. There's been like three different guys. They're all flaring at this guy. Is he like the pastor? I don't know. The disco karate master? Beautiful feathered hair. I want his gi though. His gi kind of fly. I wish somebody had ironed it, but it is kind of fly. Well, like, you can tell... One thing is, like, in the Bay Area, a lot of Filipino people. So, like... I grew up around a lot of Filipino people and like No. Oh. oh Lord. It's been a it's been a shit night for us technology wise, guys. Aww. It's done. I grew up with a lot of Filipino people. And, like, I've seen a lot of movies like this. Can I make this sound, this music, on my bite beat to this? Yo, he's been making beats, like, the last, like, 40 minutes. Like, just straight up, just beatboxing, like, 
So basically, No Man's Sky has this beat maker in it for some reason. And he's just been like... Making fire. Oh, they kidnapped that white lady. Whatever. He's making fire ass beats. Like. Trying. You make fire shit. I know it's fire shit because, like, I mean, I was in the just, like, dying. Fucking dancing and shit. Like, dying. Like, I want that. I already have the bike, but I have everything. I have pretty much everything. But you have made it. No, I haven't made it because I've I got fun. Oh, shit. This is a blood sport, apparently. <laughs> You can tell by the barbed wire? What's that means? Barbed wire and around the boxing ring means blood sport. What kind of bad movie kind of sport are you doing? The White Fist! White Fist of Fury. Firecracker. I believe that we have the same brain. I believe this is our firecracker. It is apparently a real karate champ. I looked it up. But she still knows Cynthia Rothrock. Cynthia Rothrock is Mother Christmas. Still a bad What shit does it watch on Yeah. You know, for that with, with that guy. The guy that the other guy that's like a martial artist type. Like, yeah, they're two straight up like legitimate martial artists and do this shit. That should have been where they bonded, like. Apparently she has the bosom. I don't know. I haven't really gotten a good look at it, but the, the movie description just describes it as a buxom blonde martial artist. I feel like people just say that. Yeah, maybe. Plus, you know, I think like in the 70s, a B cup was considered buxom, you know, and they were like, everybody was fucking Hello, twiggy. I'm Susanna Carter. I have a reservation. Please fill up this format. How long do you stay? Because even though this came out in 81, I have a feeling this was made in the 70s. But I will be needing a wake up call for 6 30 in the morning, isn't it? Have a nice day. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, she might be like a C cup, maybe. I don't know. Oh, I wasn't. Sorry. You gotta pay attention to the movie, baby. Stop doom scrolling. Maybe he's got shirts. I want that one. Not that one. I want the white one for you. Yeah. That shirt is dope. I want it. Yeah, y'all know he's an ugly shirt on the store. Yeah, like, you kind of need it in some of these movies. Oh, here we go. In her underwear. Yeah, she is not particularly boxing. Uh, but see, I've skewed. Mama has skewed his view. I would put on a bra, but I, I kind of don't care. Let him hang. Yeah, I'm saying that's a good thing. believe we're gonna see them at some point so don't get guys retroactive but don't get butterball naked for these movies bruh so many women will get butterball naked i used to wonder yeah right uh, like when your boobs are bigger like, i'd be like you know i used to be like oh why won't women get nude for movies why is that a writer in so many women's contracts because you know hey I, I i look like fucking some of these women i'd get naked but then you like watch these b ass movies and be like you got naked for this like amelia clark got naked for game of thrones nigga like you got naked for a fucking filipino martial hey, arts know. flick is pete around yeah, I'll apparently be like i guess this is corman I don't, I don't know if he directed it, but I think it's from his, like, production company or whatever. Yeah. And Roger Cor- There'll never be another like him. No. Um, and I guess, like, it wasn't originally in the movie that she was gonna have to get naked, and then, like, they basically just made her during the fucking production, and she had never been in a movie before, I don't think, and, like, she just basically went along with it, but it was pissed off about it later. She should be. You don't make nobody get naked. Vanessa Goodman. 
Do you know her? Really, we she need to sex this up. <laughs> she hadn't been around for weeks. Sounds like you keep pretty close tabs. Apparently, one of the nude scenes is particularly well, generally I'm on my own comical. business. Just so happens I've been trying to give her a telegram for a week or so. May I see it? Nope. The telegram's for me. Why do you want to see it? I'm Susie Carter, Bonnie's sister. Vanessa Goodman's just a bylaw. Hey, Ray! A bylaw? What does that mean? In-law. Where's that telegram of Bonnie? That's the archaic word for in-law. It's in our room. I slipped it under her door. That's the one well, I, I was looking through her keyhole. <laughs> yeah, it's not pouring it. Oh my god! Damn, why are you gonna have 50 Filipino people just attack you, Brad, in nowhere? And just show them off, because you're big, you're a big white giant. I mean, I feel like that would be your move. That would be your go to. Turn down the bar. What the fuck kind of bar fight is this? I don't know, but it just broke out out of nowhere. Right? This martial art ass fucking fight that just went out of nowhere, man. Like, there has to be a pretext. You're just like, I, I've i been drinking here for six years and I hated you the whole time. Couldn't, couldn't be me, bro. I'd be like, you niggas are fucking up my furniture. Hey, that's my pool cue, bro. Pay for that. Hey! I want her dress. It's so cute. Mm. I kind of want her jumpsuit, too. Like the fucking janitor ass jumpsuit. Cinemax. I want that kind of shirt too. I have not seen that video. These sound effects, man, they are so like just. Who was the Foley art? Clearly, the Foley artist only had two coconuts. Or two steaks. Two raw steaks. Yeah, he had two steaks and two coconuts, and that's what. That's that was the budget. It's a Corman, so. Bonnie never went anywhere without her camera. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just Smash from cut punch to, to Smash the... cut to we done beat up the whole bar for no ass. Smash cut to so Bonnie didn't go nowhere without her camera. This is great. This is the best <laughs> movie in the world. She said she couldn't explain it on the phone. She's probably out visiting some friends. Couldn't be that. She said she had a big story. Let me see that. Smash cut the developer. Who's he? He's bad news. Where can I find him? Works down the arena for Eric Stollard. Drugs, prostitution, gambling. I don't think you want to meet him. Guess again. Hey, Terry. Hey, Buff. You got the million dollar? Yep, and I see you're making your picks on the Fox 2 for 6 app. You know, it's free to play and fans who pick right when one Can you just gamble now? Money. Pick the outcomes of six games by one Eastern this Sunday for another chance to win. Is it technically not gambling? Like, I don't think you're spending money. We're more than a coffee shop. We're a place where people actually connect and talk. You go on the app and you see ads, so that's that's your money that you're spending. And you just make picks and have a chance to win. This was created to embrace inclusion, elevate artists. Drugs and prostitution. Those two 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 of my three favorite things in the world. And gambling. So three of my favorite. Three out of three. Place where we're all different and all artists. Visit Bonfire. That shirt looks terrible. You did bad. Nurse City had a good video about the difference between like merch and like a fashion statement, you know. And like I would want my merchandise to look to be something that was fashionable. You know, that niggas could wear and it's not necessarily you know, they're wearing it out of pride, they love me, but it's not it's something, you know, sexy. I want that job. I wanna just stand on a platform in a short dress. And another night of martial arts entertainment. And for the first exhibition, we present to you. Look at that lady looking uncomfortable as hell. Mr. Lou Kong Lou. Mr. Lou Kong Lou. 
I wish shit. I wish we had dragon geese as our uniform at work. That'd be dope. That'd be dope as fuck. Chuck. Chuck Mangione. That was my only. That was my only Chuck joke. I'm Who's Chuck. She? I don't know. I've never seen him. Go check her out. <laughs> Place the a woman walks into my too. place like she's looking for something. It's not just another game. Now check her out. Yes, sir. These fucking sound effects. In case you're not aware of it, this club is off limits to all military personnel and their dependents. I'm independent, over 21, and just passing through. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. What is he wearing? So, you're a black belt. That's right. And I'm looking for a place to work out. I heard about you, so here I am. I still don't get the connection. I mean, there are many gyms in this town. Why this club? Is this a gym? <laughs> no, it's a club. As he just, as he stated. So. I need a place to work out. If I can get paid for doing it, so much the better. You put me on? Try me. Mm, Wait here. Try you. What? And here they are, oh. fight fans! I thought that was the soundtrack. Big Billy! Not a song we about to start. <laughs> Big Billy Sorry, and Bruno. I, was, I wasn't kicking you, I was just watching. I want you to watch this. May just change your mind. Oh my god, look at those giant pants! Now doing martial arts on the stage, MC Hammer. <laughs> yeah, how come? I want to go to a nightclub that's martial arts for MC Hammer. Crowley's right. Yeah. That'd be dope. Like. No holes barred. Oh ah, yeah, it looks real terrible. I, I would also prefer if there wasn't a fucking carpet on the floor while I was doing it, but that's all right. So this kid stuff is supposed to convince me this is strictly for men? Guys aren't broken and down. I think you can take that. If the money's right. I'm not talking money. I'm talking physical punishment. I can take it. I have five hundred dollars. Says you can't go three minutes with Bruno. Rack him up. This music is heavy. I like it. Where is this club? In the Philippines. Oh, well, it's five stories. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's fun, but it's tourist track. Hey, man, but if it's fun, that's all that matters. The dreams, like a three story. Yeah, I got my feet on the floor and the dance club. That's what I want. I want to get drunk and fucking play arcade games. Wow, amazing. A woman. A female. I don't know, Crowley. I don't know what happens if they hit a customer. You're pretty good. Mm -hmm. You still find me amusing? Well, let's change that to interesting. You're still trying to size me up, aren't you? Hey! I like your style. Where's my 500 bucks? Kind of scam. Mm -hmm. Forget it. I'm just trying to pay the rent. We'll let you know. In the meantime, don't call us. We'll call you. 
Pray, what are you doing here? Thought you might need a ride. Okay. She's good, too good. She's a martial arts teacher, six Dan black belt. Owns her own dojo in LA, out here on vacation. Vacation. You get on her tail, charm her, do whatever you have to, but find out her real reason. This porn star reject supposed to charm her? Yeah. Except I've got to get closer, a little more on the inside. It's all. You in teach the martial place. arts, right? Right. Ever hear of Bernice? That's the thing they do with the sticks. Yeah. A special form of defense, unique to the Philippines. That's it? You're here to research our niece? There are several schools in the island. And one of the master gurus lives in the nearby mountain. Pani did the story on it. She did? How did this old pirate end up tending bar in the Philippines? What, pray tell, do we owe this great honor? He's an old pirate. Don't he worry. In that? I'm here to see a lady, not you. Maybe the lady has something to say about that. It's nice to see someone has taste around here. No one is trying to fuck you, bro. Smooth guitar music. <laughs> That's Parker's real man. <laughs> I can't <couldn't> keep it. <laughs> it kind of does look like Parker. <laughs> I didn't expect you to call so oh, soon. Oh, God. <laughs> Much less know where to That's find so me. Weird. <laughs> well, it's I'm not sorry, now you won't be able to unsee it. Like nope. comes into town. Um, I'm going to tell Parker to grow a mustache. <laughs> He's already trying that. that. Taste for this dinner? You might say. Also, isn't he? It's se the boy's 17. If he grows a mustache now, he's a rapist as far as anyone's concerned. Okay. Yeah, this dialogue is horrible. I'm here to check out your credentials. Yeah, well, I mean, less than, nothing is as bad as less than a high, time of heartache. Exhibition match? That's nothing compared to what I might have planned for you. I'm listening. First, we have a lot of getting to know you to do. What kind of... Did you clink two ice cubes together? I hate... Whoever the Foley artist is, like, can we talk, man? What is he wearing? What is that? Ah! This Matahari. She's got you by the ball. Stay out of this, Grip. Do you think she's clean? Yeah, she's fine. She doesn't want to cause problems for anyone. Yeah, well, she better not. She wants to work here. Screw her! I intend to, but that's not the point. Psst. Look, Humpty Dumpty here might not think so, but I think she could add some color to the games and the club. I'll think about it. Why don't you give her a break? She could use the money. We got enough problems without worrying about getting some female karate expert a job. Feet, Griff, man. is everything out of control? My contacts will have the merchandise available. It'll be there, Grip. That's enough out of both of you for right now. Now get your asses out of here. Who is this man? Tell me something about this guy. Grip or this guy? This guy, I know who Grip is. Grip? Look, I told you. Forget about the girl for now. Dumb punk. Get yourself a nice Filipino bra. I have a feeling we haven't heard the last of that girl. Okay. Listen, she wanted a woman. That's what they gave her. Let's go to the mountains. She dressed like like a girl in a Bad News Bears movie. Mm -hmm. Like a little girl in the nineteen seventies. Look at that hair. That has got it. And the shirt, like trying to trying to trying to join the boys' baseball team.
and we gotta go to work tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be funny. Because of Harper. <laughs> gonna be like, hey, oh, your dad's not a Filipino movie star. Unless. Who's this whitey? Oh, he asks what can teach you that you still do not know. Our niece. Why do you wish to learn our niece? My knowledge of the martial arts would not be complete without him. Do you have to learn every martial art to... Oh, you gotta... You know, old men like answers like that. Yeah. He's, a, he's a fucking martial arts boomer. The fruits of wisdom fall on different That's a movie lands title right on there. different times. Martial arts boomer. <laughs> You're right. New action yeah, heroes. I'm not making any bad I mean, I could be Chuck Norris's next movie. <laughs> Martial Arts <laughs> Boomer. Um, Only be cautioned against I don't violence. think so yet. Yeah, not I yet. Mean, form of defense. Where the sticks meant for killing, they would have sharp edges. I understand. There you go, you've learned our niece. <laughs> what happened? Seems to me like Chuck is getting a little out of control. I can handle him. Oh, she doesn't talk I don't to know why you bother. Yeah. Simple. I need him to keep an eye on Grip. That's another one. It's absolutely useless. Not to mention crude. No, I need Grip. He's the contact to the suppliers. That's just it. Like I've said, Diamond again. Why can't you bypass Grip? Make contact with the suppliers yourself. Clearly you need some underestimate Grip. He's a clever old bastard. Is it medicine or is it heroin? Let anybody medicine. Next to his supplier. You don't get heroin on the I'm bottle. Sure you can think of a way if you only put your mind to it. Don't you worry about it. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of things myself. I was just trying to help. <laughs> like that we're not gonna explain it. But what I also like is that he's like, ah, it's okay, Brown. White, I got you. Mm -hmm. Look at that Corolla, baby. Okay. You know how I feel. Another Toyota. I want kind of all their shirts, really. We need to go to the Philippines, man. We need to go to the 70s. Let's go to the 70s. Well, we can get to the Philippines a lot easier than we can get to the 70s. You can go to the guys like this. I 
I was hoping this would not be necessary. I could scream and call the police, you know. I am the police. I want you to lay off Chuck Donner. What's the matter? You jealous? Go home. This is no place for you. Bonnie found out the hard way. Where is she? We don't know yet. Look, if you interfere, we'll never be able to solve this case. Sir, all I need to know is one thing. Okay. I'll stay out of your way. What kind of grease you got to keep that afro going? What is all this? And where can I get some? <laughs> what in the hell is going on here? It's what they call a fiesta. Well, how in the world do you expect your suppliers to get us this stuff with this crowd watching all the time? You are not supposed to ask the questions, my friend. You are just a lucky who carry the money. Would you be kind enough to hand it to me? I don't like it. Oh, yeah. Well, why don't you just take it out and count it in front of all these people, fish brain? Deep Very deep. Yeah, pointy boobs are buxom now. Yeah. In the 70s, that's what counted for buxom. Good day. Don't want to ask. It's ready. Oh, go. Yeah, we're all bad shots, but this is definitely not going to scare Going to the dam, boys! I guess we're going to kill a few of those guys. Say you're making your picks on the Fox Super 6 app. You know it's free to play and fans who pick right win one million dollars of my money. Pick the outcomes of six games by one Eastern this Sunday for another chance to win one million dollars of Terry's money. Pasta nugget. You aim high in every game. You have high standards. After all, it's your body, your life, and your future. Wouldn't the same go for your birth control? If you're looking for low hormone pregnancy prevention, aim high and go low. Meet Kylina, the you a skateboarding teenager. Five-year IUD that's highly effective and reversible anytime. In case your plans change, 
Don't use Kylina if you have a public I don't need to get infections easily or have certain cancers. Less than 1% of users get a serious infection called PID. If you have pelvic or stomach pain, or if Kylina comes out, talk to your healthcare professional. Kylina may attach to or go through the uterus. Pregnancy with Kylina is uncommon, but can be life threatening and may cause loss of pregnancy or fertility. Ovarian cysts may occur or usually disappear. Bleeding and spotting may increase in the first three to six months and remain irregular. Periods over time may become shorter, lighter, or may stop. Kylina does not protect against HIV. Let's watch our son sing karaoke. Aim high and go low with Kylina. Ask your HCP about the lowest hormone, five year IUD. Some kind of pony donkey mule thing. This is getting costly, huh? No! 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 Oh, stay getting kicked out. Give daddy a kiss. You're, you're not dead. Do what I say. Okay. We'll pay for that. We'll pay for that. I I would say like it depends. I'm I'm I can't take birth control pills. They give me headaches, they make me physically sick, like it's not. I would say the best, it, it, it really is dependent. I would say like, if you want no hormone, a diaphragm. If you want something that's going to last and you don't have to think about taking a pill, an IUD is probably the way to go. She's Indiana Jones now. Shit, they finally brought out a gun. No! Her greatest weakness! Welcome to our little question and answer session. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? I am here to ask the questions. You are here to provide the answers. Not until I know what's going on. It seems you don't quite understand the seriousness of this little meeting. That's right. I haven't the foggiest idea. Perhaps you need a little convincing. This is my little concoction of truth serum. You answer the question correctly. The snake stays locked up. You tell a lie, it is released. I warn you. The Philippine cobra is the deadliest of its kind. Is that true? Tell me. Where did you go yesterday morning? I went for a ride. You know, touring the countryside. Sightseeing? Is that all? That's all. You were at the ambush, weren't you? Oh, birth control has side effects. What ambush? Um. What if you're worried about side effects, get a diaphragm. Okay. I'm a martial arts instructor by profession. I'm here to study the Arnis technique. In the meantime, I'm looking around for a way to support myself. What is your real purpose here in Olongapo? I just told you. You lie! You lie! You work for the police! I don't work for the police. They pick me up for questioning, that's all. Ah! You were with the police yesterday! This is the moment of truth, Susanna. Is that her name? Why are you here in alone? Mm. Who sent you? I came on my own. How many times do I have to tell you that? Who ambushed us yesterday? Who? I told you, I don't know what you're talking about. To inform the police. 
You had us ambushed. Admit it. Admit it. Is she gonna, is she gonna karate kick the snake? Please tell me she karate kicks the snake. Is there a reason the snake is posing for this? Electronic music. Watch, baby, watch. well in hand. You might say I had to snake my way through. I was worried about you. <sighs> Needless. Thanks anyway. Did he say penises? You look like you could use a drink. Needlessly, I think. You are one. <laughs> one of my many talents. Mm-hmm. So, how does one earn enough to afford this kind of luxury? One uses his head. Decides what he wants. I'm, a uh, I'm pretty sure they're Goes mostly after. all Asian. Mm, you seem to be people. quite successful. What? I'm, I'm persistent. persistent. <laughs> Roger Corman always knew the secret, me. which was cheaper to use the actors that are on the ground right. than it is to, to hire some white folks to play them. Very passionate. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these white people are actual old fucking expats living in the Philippines. How are you on hey, oh. But uh, Especially this guy. Yeah. Don't make me wait too long. I hate suspense. Frankly, so do I. That was like from two hours ago, baby. You Wonder know, am I supposed to read your mind? Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Let's believe this paunchy old man is a fucking martial artist. I heard about Griff bringing that girl in for questioning. I hear Chop got in the way. You hear too much. I have a right to know some things. Chop's mind is so full of that girl. Yeah, he's found a new toy. Leave him be. But he's giving her a run of the place. He wants to take her to the training camp. Look, I asked him to take her there. I want to see her in the arena of death. She's got killer instincts. I can sense it. I want her to know that we sanction the fight to the death. What makes you think she's that way? Once you learn how to kill, you often wonder if you'll ever do it. But you never get a chance, except in a war or a fight to the death. There's no war that she can join. There's no one going to tangle with her, except my gladiators. That was some ADR. Yes, it was. It ha now you have to say, except my gladiators, I'm just gonna open my mouth. Except my gladiators. <laughs> I don't know how you get a Filipino fro. Oh, God, what are you wearing, sir? I'm impressed. I love it. I can't. I love well. that. There's more. You haven't seen it all yet. I like that. I feel like they got wave. It's wave caps to get you the fucking front. 
because Filipino hair texture is, is like a, a, a like a side little obsession of mine. Hair texture in general amongst different groups of people is like a little. When you're black, it be, it's you know you, you you learn these things, right? Filipinos have such a wide array of hair textures. It's it's odd because you meet you. I've met Filipino people who had hair like black people. I've met Filipino people who had hair like Indian people, very thick, but like still real long. I've met Filipino people with real thin hair. It's a it's it's a real spectrum. Oh, yeah. It's a mestizo nation. That it is. That's just a straight up black. Bring her to the fight tonight. Get that Domino's pizza gee. That's what you want, isn't it? <laughs> they do, they do, but Philippines was once a Spanish colony, so it's 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 a mixture between the indigenous people and Spanish people, and likely some imported peoples, like likely some Mexicans who were part of uh, Spain's invasion, who were co-opted by Spain to go and you know fight. Uh, I also don't forget that like Spain itself had you know, more than most countries in Europe a fair amount of admixture from North Africa. Right. So Filipinos are a lot of things. It makes for it makes for a very interesting um, relationship for Filipino Americans because Filipino Americans tend to, you know, like a lot of immigrant communities, are very stuck together. I mean, the but Filipino Americans are an Asian community that is very intertwined with the black community. A true fighter fights to kill. Otherwise, it's only a game. What's going on with the camera today? It looks real cloudy. It's real smoky in here. I think I must need to make some adjustments since Windows restarted. Yeah. Uh, updated. Fucked everything up. Yeah, Windows update fucked everything up for my baby. Hey, baby. Hey. What are you doing tonight? Hey, baby. Come on back. Hey, baby. Come on back. Hey, baby. <laughs> Did he try it? He tried it! Oh, sorry, baby. I'll give you a smash little hands. I'm sorry. Hey, baby! Bitch, you know martial arts. Why are you running? I have a feeling this was filmed in L.A. like after the movie was made. Yeah. They are no longer in the Philippines. No. <laughs> Also, why wouldn't he walk her home or whatever? Yeah, this is okay, clearly hold America. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is probably her other new, one of her new scenes that they added after. Did he just fall on a site? Yep. Why is there a site there? And why are these like random street guys happy to murder a cop? A security guard, what the fuck is supposed to do? Uh, I don't know. Don't give the Philippines a bad name like that. This ain't the Philippines, baby. This is, this is America. Yeah, but they're portraying it like it's still the Philippines. Uh, are they gonna just catch your bra too? Like I don't feel like that that's exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah. Bra, panties, and stilettos. <laughs> what you gotta do, baby, is find a weapon! If you're if you're ever in an industrial park, everything's a weapon. 
this is a weird horror movie. It's like an 80s teen horror movie. Yep. It really is. Right, is she doing the right thing? She's taking her shoes off. Okay. <laughs> Still dead, guys. What was that face? That's his right face. Brows coming off. Rackmaster, is that? Did they do that on purpose? <laughs> oh my god. Dude, martial arts. Oh my god. Only, see, they only make women do shit like this. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna say no bad. Okay, so your pants come off. Your dick's flopping up. <laughs> You're gonna have to fight with your dick out. Of course, if I... This is why I wish I was, like, a billionaire. Because I would remake every movie for Date Night Dumpster. Yeah. Except it would be, like, you fighting with your dick out. i use the same music and shit, too. What are these eye shots? Steal a shirt. <laughs> nah. Oh God, I can't believe you whipped out your titties for this bitch. I supplies. Arrange for the delivery of a ship. The fuck? I mean, that was one of the best scenes we've ever seen. I, I can't deny that was that was great. Like that's that's Zoom gas. That's fucking all of Urge to Kill, like... That was fantastic. I give her boobies... I give They're her... not bad. They're a little better than I thought they were. I give her boobies a solid A. I, I, I do like her boobs. Mm. They, they might be a but C. But she, she was confident... Uh, what I liked was that she was confident in what she was doing. Yeah. Which is, you know, easily that could have... Uh, any other actor that probably could have slipped into... You couldn't have got Cynthia Rothrock to take off her shit. No. No. Um, I'm impressed. I am impressed. This movie is good. Yeah, she definitely... That's one of those like rare situations where she looks better naked. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mostly because 70s underwear is made for everybody, Grandma. Now you want to take a break or what? Yeah, we're going to take a little break after that amazing scene. Um, so... Go grab yourself a drink, a sandwich, go to the bathroom. We'll be back in a few minutes. You need to fuck your scenes up, by the way. Yeah, yeah. What? You, what? Oh. I don't like so. Oh, so there. Good. Um. Yeah, like, you know, he's a professional. Yeah, he's a professional rapist. The other one seemed a little more distracted, the one that died. But, yeah, that's how he got, that's how he died. Yeah. But yeah, we'll be back in a few minutes. Not that one. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Show starts in eight minutes. 
Yum, yum. It's time for a tasty and refreshing snack. Promise to satisfy your hunger, your thirst, your sweet tooth. So visit our refreshment center now. Let's go. Show starts in seven minutes. It's refreshment time, folks. Taste that beats the others go. Pepsi pours it on. Taste that beats the others go. Pepsi pours it on. Yum, yum. It's a meal in itself. Our all-meat super dog. Enjoy one now. Show starts in six minutes. As everyone knows, rainbows usually have a treasure at the end. Let's follow this one and see if we can find the pot of gold. Brother, and I suppose you've come to claim a treasure. Well, we'd like to see the gold first. Nathan, there's better than gold in here, me lad. No, no, just look here, no. Candy, refreshing soft drinks, popcorn, ice cream. Well, that's some treasure, but anyone can buy luscious treats like these at the snack bar. You don't tell me. Uh, do you suppose you could get me a job as a snack bar attendant? Show starts in five minutes. <laughs> happy to have you with us this evening and want you to enjoy every minute of your stay here. And while you relax and stretch, visit our concession where you'll find something to please you. There are ice cold drinks, delicious sandwiches, ice cream, coffee and snacks, and many other pleasing treats. Our foods are fresh and tasty, our drinks satisfying and refreshing. They're so good. You get more out of life when you go out to a movie. Show starts in four minutes. To visit our snack bar and treat yourself to some delicious Castleberry's pit cooked barbecue sandwiches. Cook the Castleberry way slowly over open pits of glowing charcoal, then seasoned with a sauce that's zesty, yet delightfully mild to please the entire family. Also at the snack bar, you'll find popcorn and soft drinks and candy and french fries to go with your Castleberry's barbecue sandwiches. There's plenty of time before the movie starts, so visit our snack bar right now for Castleberry's pit-cooked barbecue sandwiches. Still plenty of time to come and be served at the refreshment center before showtime. Show starts in three minutes. Show starts in two minutes. Your attention, please. 
All new Hotshot electric in-car heaters have been installed for your comfort and convenience. Just insert heater through car window and turn on the switch. When leaving, please turn switch off and replace on speaker post. Warning, high voltage. For your own safety, do not attempt to repair or remove wires. Do not attempt to open heater unit. If you need assistance, please notify the theater box office or concession manager. starts in one minute. Please remember to replace the speaker on the post when you leave the theater. No, right, then you'll the show. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves.
guess. Yeah. All right, we're back. We did it. We did it. We've got popcorn. Lady I, Columbia put a door on. I've had to put the door now back on, you yeah. She's the handy one around here. I uh, get yourself a person who is handy. I am the handy one. Um, which it gives me. I would say this. As a woman, it gives me a lot of pride that I can fix shit. I fixed our fucking bookcase. Mm -hmm. I put on all the doorknobs. Mm -hmm. I install everything needs to be installed. I do that. Except the air conditioners, that's his job. Anything heavy, that's my job. Well, I get scared. I get so scared. You know how nervous I get when we put them in. I was so glad, like, I wasn't in the room when he took the one in the, um, the bedroom out, and I was asleep when he took the one in here out. I was so glad, because I get so much anxiety about it just going through the window. You don't have window units in California, right? Mm -mm. Windows slide vertically instead of horizontally. Hmm. So you can't put a window unit basically in. Do they always have central air? Anybody who doesn't have central air, what they have are the little portable ones with the duct that you put out the window. Hmm. I've never actually like seen those around here, like for sale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because... I don't know how they work. Like I don't know how well they work. You got a decent one, right? But so the difference is one rooms tend to be bigger. Um, so it doesn't, it's really odd how it cools because it'll cool, like, it'll cool like two thirds of the room. The outer rim of the room will be hot or mm -hmm. at least war still kind of warm. It'll be a little cooler than ambient than it is, you know, outside of the um, presence of the air conditioner. But then like, there's like a cold zone. All right, so your election update, um, Biden's lead has grown in Georgia and Pennsylvania. By how much? Because saying that just gives me false hopes. I think he's up by like 30,000 in Pennsylvania. That's good, that's good. 4,000 in Georgia, but it was only like 1,000 earlier, so. Um, his lead shrank a little bit in Arizona, but he's still like a percent up. I think Nevada's about the same. Biden gave a speech. He basically said, it's not official yet, but I won. <clears throat> you know, Mitch McConnell was still trying to argue about the size of this damn stimulus. Now's not the time, Mitch. Really? Especially because you're clearly dying. Hmm. Clearly, right? Mm -hmm. um, we'll deal with that later. Um, the, co the country's hurt. If you don't do something by Christmas, before, really before Christmas, because all the good sales are going on now, if you don't get this shit done before Christmas, you're going to have a dead economy come. And... This is where the Republicans are fucked. Because we don't know who's going to win this yet. If the Republicans, let's say let's say Trump wins. You just handed off a dead economy to your president who's going to get blamed for that dead economy. Mm -hmm. You have to do this. Well, I think Mitch and the GOP leadership are basically done with Trump. <clears throat> He served his purpose. If he wins, great. Fine. Whatever. But he got them there, fucking Supreme Court, supermajority. You know? Oh shit. If Biden wins, the vet might get laid. Well. I think we need details on that. Right? I need some details, and I need to also be like, if Biden wins, shit, he gonna win. Hmm. I mean, I 
get get it how you live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. I I feel like. I'm just I'm now all I can think about is the vet's chances against Lay going up and I'm just excited for her. Um <laughs> You're a good friend, baby. The Democrat, like, the Republicans have to cave on this. Because there's still one more because if they can still hold up the next stimulus, but they've got because there's gonna have to be three at least. Because there's gonna have to be another one when this one runs out. The Republicans need to just say, fuck it. We'll pay. The 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 the, the thing that they have, if they're going to be about fiscal responsibility, the thing they have to hold to the fire is the first trillion has to be paid for up front through taxation. Mm-hmm. I will, I think me, I think leftists, I think Democrats, I think everybody left of center can, can live with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a reasonable. Okay, okay, girl. Do that shit. Hey, remember, you gotta give us some foreknowledge. Come to Boston. We going out. We gonna do some shit. We'll all have masks on, but we going to scoop a scootery. I just want an excuse for more scoop and scootery. Mm-hmm. Um. Now I've been I've been avoiding dairy lately, which has actually been good for me. That's good, baby. I'm glad it's helping. Mm. Um. The GOP is not reasonable. They're going to try to hold up Biden because they want president. Sure. Um. That could backfire on them. We could have a blue wave in twenty two. It'll be too late by then. Oh. Yeah, let's go to let's all go to Oregon. Sure, baby. I'm trying to I'm trying to try mushrooms. I'm trying to have you trip set. Are you really trying to try mushrooms? I know you. You don't do hallucinogens. I got a lot of stuff going on up here. Still, in my life. I got a lot of stuff going on up here. I need that to... Now, some ecstasy, you'd be trying that. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Trying it. Trying it again. I'd be reuniting. <laughs> we would be having a reunion, too. Um, I'd like him to try ecstasy and see what he was like. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, but uh, quarantine just made me want to fucking get high. Like... That's why I'm playing video games. Mm-hmm. No Man's Sky is basically like tripping on drugs with all the colors. I mean, No Man's Sky is, is not like tripping. No Man's Sky is a job. It's a job. I'm working. That's what. That's why whenever I'm playing video games, I'm like on a on a grind. I'm like I'm working. Yeah. I do want to go check out the like. I get I get real like cagey like I I can't wait for this to be over because I'm a, I'm gonna go play No Man's Sky like No Man's Sky like I would definitely recommend it just because like see yeah you got stoned I got high one time I smoked pot one time in quarantine I'm trying to be good I'm trying to lead that sober life you know pot smoking pot like i just hate the way i wake up and feel groggy as shit and now it's about like now you know i'm I'm 30 so now doing drugs is like how am i gonna feel when i wake up yeah 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 did i mean like i know what you mean you know what i mean that was basically the time that i was like oh i get hangovers now right all in my 20s i never got a hangover Ain't, ain't did hangovers. Now I'm like, ooh, no. I can barely drink because if I drink, like, I swear to God, like, all my life, like, I feel like I'm being poisoned. You are. 
Yeah, but it really feels. I feel real shitty when I drink now. Um. Damn it. What up, baby? Um, I'm thinking of a response to say to that. We, you know, we is one of those things that. It's good if you didn't discover it as a teenager, you're doing good. Because it fucks you it fucks you with you because you don't have a whole lot of motivation when you're a teenager to do to do anything when you when you stoned. So really weed is a drug for it the time to try weed like you try weed as a teenager. You smoke it like three two, three times when you're a teenager, just to know what it feels like. But then you don't do it till you like twenty six. I'm serious. You don't you don't do it till like you got a job, you got a regular schedule, you know, you got a place to live, you kind of secure in your life. That's the time to start smoking weed, because then like you know how it'll you you remember how it'll affect you, but you don't lose just all motivation. That didn't happen to me. Your weed affects you weirdly. It does. <clears throat> Most of the time, it didn't do anything at all to me, but. The times that it did, maybe want to go out. <clears throat> yeah, he want he got high. He wanted to go outside. I was like, let's go walk around. Let's go. Let's go to the store. Let's do something. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like if he smokes weed, he'll make me do stuff. <laughs> we are supposed to be doing our night walks. We're supposed to be. It's mm. like cold though. Yeah, but th we still. That's that's when you go. You gotta go when it's you know when you're cold, whatever. Because then you ain't gonna do it when it ain't you know perfect. Mm. But we do need to go on night walks. But that's a good age to, to try it, um, I, I think. It's better that you tried it at 20. Because your life is a little together, you know, you're not. I wish I hadn't smoked weed my whole teenage life. Hmm. I think I was 20 also when I first tried weed. That's a good age for it. I did acid before I did weed. Amen. As evidenced by the fact he said, did weed. Mm -hmm. um, weed really is a good working man's drug because you, know, you get home and you do whatever routine, you know, feed whoever you got to feed. And, you know, if it's yourself, it's your cats. If you, you know, that's good. That's good. I think people should, like, you should. Well, the thing about teenage years is I wouldn't start, I would do this. 16 is the age, right? When you're 16, that's when you fucking cut loose. All right? Most of my friends started a lot earlier than I did. <clears throat> um, most of my friends were, like, drinking and smoking pot by, like, 12 or 13. Yeah. I had a lot of friends like that. I didn't start drinking until I was, like, 15 or close to 16. I want to say I was maybe 14 when I first had my first drink. But I was immediately very into drinking. I spent the rest of my teens drinking. Mm, I was not in drinking. Tried acid, I want to say... 18 or 19. I was not into drinking. I was into smoking pot. Yeah, I mean, I had, like, I had a shot of tequila when I was, like, 10. Um, <clears throat> I think the first time I tried alcohol, I was, like, probably, like, 7 or 8. And, like, I... Took a sip of my dad's beer. Or was it my grandfather? I don't remember. Uh, but it was like a Bud Light, and I was like, that's disgusting. Yeah, it's always dads. Mm -hmm. Dads always be like, here, take a little sip of this. Because you know? they know you'll hate it. Yeah. Most usually. I mean. My I think I think dads do it, too, just to see your reaction. Yeah. My cousin Jackie loved it when she was, like, little. She would, like, drink her mother's whole fucking, like, Coors Light and shit. Um, but most kids will, will hate beer, like, at that, at that young age, you know. 
Well, especially like the cheap beer that dads drink. Um, yeah, dads love some shitty beer. <laughs> and then... My uncle gave me a shot of tequila at like 10. And gave it to me and my cousin. Me and all, all of his kids, like... And again, like my cousin Jackie loved it. I hated it. Um, my cousin Billy hated it. And he was young. He was a little younger than me. He was probably like eight. At what the time. uncle is this? My dad's brother. The one I met. Did you meet him? Yeah. It was Christmas. Christmas one. The Christmas before I moved here. Hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. That's some bad uncle. And, like, you're not supposed to do all that. Um, my dad was that uncle, but with weed. Mm. But not with the kids. But, like, everybody above 18 who smoked at a family gathering, my dad would leave, and they would all leave, and then everybody would come back high. And I was, I would deliberately not go because it, the lamest thing you can do is get high with your parents. Yeah. Now, will I pretend, listen, I'm not going to pretend like I never shared a joint with my dad. All right. I never drank with my parents, though. That's, that's low. That's the lowest. Um, but, of course, I've shared a fucking, you know, joint with my dad. Share a joint with his dad, too. I used to go drinking with my dad all the time. I'm sorry. No, no, but I'm going to tell you, though. His dad is fun. My dad's a happy drunk, which, you know. <clears throat> He's a happy stoner. Like, his dad is, is a fun dude to be around. It's, it's always joke, cracker jokes. Like, real, real type of dude you want to be around when you fucked up. Yeah, you don't want to get wasted with your parents. Yeah. I think there was maybe one night where I, like, drank a little too much around my dad, but... Yeah. By well, well, he... Let me, let me tell you, this, this nigga is far beyond of age, and he just now, like, all my at my birthday dinner, just now admitted to his parents, like, what he'd done in his life, like, taking acid. So, mm -hmm. like... And his poor mom was just like... I think my dad already knew, but... Your dad knew, but your mom was like, wide-eyed and like, oh. He has the cutest mom, though. Which is funny, because, like, she comes across as, like, very straight-laced and everything, but, like... Then my dad starts telling stories, like, yeah, we were doing, like, fucking horse tranquilizers and ketamine and shit. And I was like, okay. And you're like... Right. Like, all right. And you did, I didn't, we didn't need to go there. I mean, I already knew that, but like. I didn't, and I didn't need, I needed to envision your mom as like this, you know, straight laced mom, you know. I didn't need that. Love. But like, basically like, <clears throat> like uh, she stopped, like, you yeah, know, probably like, probably around the time she got pregnant with me. Yeah. I would imagine. And he never did. Like, you know. <laughs> and he never did. Um, no, my my dad was a typical like hippie, like in the sixties. He was in California for the summer of love. He smoked pot, he dropped acid, he did all that shit. Um My mom was the straight laced one. Like she stopped smoking cigarettes at like seventeen and she fucking uh, she did she drank but her parents were like her parents were that the greatest generation like they got hammered at night you know after fucking they, they would get hammered like uh -huh. the greatest generation could drink yeah. like they would drink a, a like heavy drinking right but they wouldn't they wouldn't be super drunk because they were used to it but they were like heavy drinking heavy smoking generation right my grandparents are like right on the edge of that like uh -huh. Yeah, like my 
my mother's father like was actually in World War Two for like a month or two. Like I think he lied on his fucking application. He was like seventeen and forty five, so like, I think he lied on his application or whatever and got in and but, you know, the war was basically over anyways. Um he's the oldest of my grandparents, so like he you know, he's just on the cusp of like the greatest generation and the silent generation, I think, and then all the other ones I guess are silent generation, maybe and the I don't know. My my both my grandmas were born in twenty one. Like my dad's mom, straight laced woman, like she had a she had a Budweiser every now and again. Like she never smoked cigarettes. She never got into like she only started like, eating edibles because her grand her delinquent grandchildren were like, Grandma, you eighty something now. It's time for you to, you know, live a little bit. Um and she liked it. Like she had dementia and she liked it a lot. Cause, you know. She already had dementia, so fuck it. What 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 did my grandma at eighty something have to remember? Um, but my mom's parents, they were, you know, heavy drinkers, heavy, heavy smokers. Um but yeah, again, all, no all drugs. Of, all of my grandparents were smokers. Like pretty heavy smokers. Um <clears throat> Again, my grandfather, the oldest one, he was like he was like, you know, your very stereotypical like <clears throat> old manly man. Like, uh-huh. you know, he was he was a nice guy. He was very nice, very polite, very like, you know, friendly. Um but he was just that very like, you know, he smoked. He would like he wasn't like a I mean, maybe he was back in the day, but like by the time I was around, he drank, but he would be like that old guy drinking beer constantly, never getting drunk, you know. You never yeah. saw him seem drunk, but he was just always had a beer around, you know. In the morning, it was like coffee until like four o'clock in the afternoon or something, and then it was beer. It was coffee for half the day, beer for the other half the day. Um, and that generation, but that whole generation was like that, where they were just like, they you catch them every day with a beer and like all day with a beer in their hand, or like just knocking it back, and they wouldn't be, but they never be seem drunk, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I don't remember any of my other grandparents really being big drinkers um so i don't i don't i don't ever remember seeing my mother's mother drink maybe, I, maybe she'd have a glass of wine every now and again but my grandma was pretty old by the time i came along so she was not she was still smoking kind of but she wasn't drinking she smoked them camel unfilters too like she she was like i was like damn well so yeah like my grandfather he smoked those fucking like the brown ones. Oh, the brown, the brown cigarettes that kill you quick. Yeah, I forget what brand, what the brand is. Nobody knows what the brand is. They just them brown cigarettes. <laughs> I've looked it up before, and I always forget what it is. But like, it's a very like old fashioned, you know, looking cigarette. You mm-hmm. know, the box and everything. <clears throat> um, and my other grandfather smoked Camel unfiltered. You know. Um, mm. Mm, and he gave me a like puff of his cigarette when I was like eight, and then I was like, "These are disgusting. Never doing that again." See how well that turned out, but you know. Well, when you young, I put you like this. I I nagged my dad to quit smoking. When I was four because I thought it was gross as shit. But like, nicotine is one of, is is one of the most addictive drugs on the planet. Like it is. If they had a better system for delivery, like if I could just spray nicotine into my face and be and feel like a cigarette, I wouldn't smoke. But smoking has its advantages, too. Smoking, one thing about smoking is, like, I met a girl in the alley the other day, last time we were, last Saturday, we were just chop, chopping it up because we were smoking. That's one, of the, that's one of the reasons people still smoke, is mm-hmm. because when you smoke with somebody, it becomes a social thing. And you don't, you feel like you know somebody you've smoked a cigarette with for a thousand years. Mm-hmm. You've known them your whole life. You know. Um... But, no, and all this a second, I didn't know either one of my grandpas. Um, they died before I was born. But, like, my grandpa, my grandpa on my mom's side was, you know, same kind, very manly man, went fishing every weekend, like, you know, had a, had a vending machine repair business on the side. Like, he yeah, was... Yeah, my, my mother's father was a firefighter. <clears throat> That was, you know, very manly. All very manly. He was in the military. He was a firefighter. Yeah, he was in the military. He fought in the Korean War. He was, um, I want to say he won a Purple Heart. 
Um, he um, he was a postman at a time when black men did not achieve that. That he was the head of his union again, another another first for him. He was head of the church choir. Like my grandpa was pillar of the community man, but he also was like street, you know, like. But he he had, had you know he had developed this very family persona in life, so he couldn't be that way kind of around. His wife, who was, you know, my grandma was like prim and proper, like she was a lady of her generation. She was very almost like a 19th century woman, very much like the runner of the household. She hosted like women's parties. She was very involved in politics like she very much. But the home was her domain, you know, um, and he couldn't be kind of the street guy. The, you know, my grandma hated my dad because my dad was from the streets. Um, but my grandpa really liked him because that was sort of the man he was, you know. Um, and so they used to like, you know, they they talk that street shit together, and you'd be like, Ugh. yeah. <clears throat> my grandfathers were polar opposites, you know. My my mother's dad was manly man and also like pillar of the community. Like, you know, he was in World War Two and Korea. You know, fucking, I was a firefighter for years and years. Um, blah blah. blah. Uh, you know, family man had six kids, you know, fucking whatever. And then my dad's dad was a criminal. <laughs> and yeah. as street as they come. And, you know, he he ran he ran numbers for the fucking Winter Hill gang and <coughs> then like even even in his, you know, old age he was like he was a, a mechanic who like was fleecing people left and right, like, you know, and running running little scams and you know doing a lot of like shit with like insurance scams and shit like that and always had a giant wad of cash like in his fucking in his sock in his boot you know my dad's dad was was that guy who was trying who was desperately trying to be like my mom's dad who was you know he had a, he was developing a family he died fairly fairly young and well my dad was fairly young i think my dad was five when he died and he had a family and he was, you know, married to my grandma. My grandma, you know, God bless her soul, but she got around. Um, all her, all her kids, not, not all. Her first four kids by one daddy, then my dad by his daddy, and then third child, last child by another daddy. And so he, he worked at a home beneficial insurance company in Virginia um, as a janitor, which at the time, you know, to just get into a corporation even as the janitor was big for you know he worked his legitimate job he was very well liked by the community uh but at night my grandpa was a pool hustler he was a really just excellent pool player and he would he he would get into all types of trouble like he was he, he could fleece you out of your money right like he barely had like a sock like not a sock drawer but like a shoe box that he kept all his money in and he come home with just five, ten grand in his fucking, you know, in his fucking boot. Nice. And, like, there were nights, like, he would take my dad and his brother down to the pool hall. And apparently one night, this nigga got mad because he, you know, he hustled him. And so grandpa decided that he wasn't going to talk that shit to me in front of my children. They hid under the pool table, and apparently grandpa went to work. Mm-hmm. Um that that was the type of man <laughs> like but he loved his family and but you know apparently there were some some issues between my grandma and grandpa because my grandma had a temper my grandma was basically like apron stalin like she didn't she didn't give a fuck like she was an authoritarian you were gonna follow her orders because she was who she was and if you didn't it was gonna be some violence involved um and so her and him had very violent fights between them and she was cheating on him with my aunt's father. Um, particularly, like, he got sick with colon cancer. Then she started cheating on him oh. with, my aunt, with my aunt's dad. Um, so that was... Just like my grandpa started cheating on my grandmother on her deathbed. Yeah, that, that, was, that, wasn't, that wasn't good. She was, apparently she didn't go to the funeral because she was pregnant with my aunt at the time. Um, was there a big age difference between them, or did he just get cancer early? He got cancer early. My grandma, my grandma got with dudes who could help provide her for her financially. Like, that was clear. 
She wasn't. She wasn't a slouch. I mean, that's she, kind of what everybody did she, back then. She worked. I mean, not, you know. And I, I want this to clear about my grandma. She was not a slouch. She worked all her life, right? But she did get with niggas to get some money. But I mean, that's that's but what that we was, did back then. That's like, what she did. You got married to have someone take care of you. you know, well, you got worked. in her case. Her, her last <laughs> husband. So my aunt's father. She never married, which my dad resented because again, he died. His father died when she when he was very young, and. When she got with this dude, who we call Bud, um, she was, you know, she, I don't think she liked him very much, but he saw, but my father saw Bud as a father figure to him. And Bud would, you know, Bud would come over on Christmas, give all the kids gifts. He would, you know, he would come over to fix things. He was, he tried to be very home, you know, tried to be very in the home, even to like, to, he was, he was infatuated, if not in love with my grandma. Like, and my grandma didn't like him very much. I never forget when they reunited. She had been living in California with us and she was just starting to get dementia. And so we took her out to Virginia to see everybody, see her family, her sisters. And like, we were like, oh, we're going to go to Bud's house. And she was like, oh, no. My grandma, very polite woman. And Bud, like he's 80 years, like he's got to have been 82 or something, or uh, 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 around there, right? He had spent all day in the kitchen cooking for her. Uh, I mean, just trays and trays and trays of food. He made sweet rolls. He made fried chicken. He baked chicken because he didn't know which one she liked. He, you know, he made all the sides. He was out in the backyard barbecue. He did, I mean, 80 year old man in his house shoes been cooking all day for her. We get over there and she's like, I'm sorry. And he, you know, he was trying, oh, hey, Sadie, I see you still looking good. And I ain't seen you in so long, baby. And come on, let's talk. And she was like, mm, what's on TV? Like she, she, they, she just did not fuck with that man, but he was in love with her. And there was a lot of resentment on my dad's part because he didn't, his relationship was always that this was like my dad. So why didn't you love my dad? But he didn't kind of get that. Listen, I got with this nigga because you, all your daddy's money got took by the government. I ain't had nothing. He was out here providing shit. Uh, I didn't really want to f- fuck with this nigga, but I did. I did for y'all. And my grandma would have never been the person to say that. You know, I would have said it. I didn't get with you to provide for no kids. I didn't bring no kids to this. Mm-hmm. I got with you because I loved you. No. And that's the, and that's, so to tell the story of America, America is this country where the initial niggas show up and they got to marry each other because I ain't got no money. And then there comes a point when niggas can just get married because they love each other. So nice. Donald Trump trying to fuck that up for all of us. Oh, Lord, we got a whole ass, good ass movie. Let's, Let's get, get back, back to the movie. Oh, what did I do? I don't know what I did. Well, you're damn sure. It didn't stop the movie, but I don't think anything started. I don't think it ended the stream, so. We're good, I think. For security reasons, I am compelled to retain that information. You understand my little precautions. No, nope. but I would like to take a few myself. I mean, just to make sure the shipment doesn't get ripped off like the last one. The more you know about this transaction, the greater the risk. I must refuse. But you don't quite understand. I'm not giving you a choice. I'm giving you an escort. Chuck goes along on a pickup. The arrangements have been made. Bringing a conspicuous American will only draw attention to me and my men. He goes, or there's no deal. Hello? Susie, hi, it's Chuck. Oh, hello, Chuck. Yeah, listen, uh, I gotta go away for a couple of days, so you won't be seeing me for a while. Call you when I get back? Okay. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Is she losing sight of the fact that he's the bad guy? I don't know. I still don't know, like, what happened to her sister. I don't know, like, who actually took her or whatever. Maybe she's still alive. Now she's just gonna go learn some Arnis for a while, I guess. I thought she already learned it because she went like, ha! Right to the camera. Oh, this is the deal, I guess. 
time she goes spying, she gets hemmed up. Why does she keep spying if she knows she's gonna get hemmed up? Lieutenant JG, undercover, narcotics Hello, division, anti narcotics unit. Police woman. And you're Santa Carter, born October 17, Augusta, Georgia. Physical education graduate from UCLA. Sixth Dan black belt, undefeated karate champion. And you're here looking for your sister Bonnie, alias Vanessa Goodman. There's a whole lot more if you're interested. How long have you been working with Eric? Longer than I care to remember. And Bonnie? What about Bonnie? Do you know anything about her? I couldn't warn her without blowing my cover. Seems she stumbled on the dope run, much like you did. Eric didn't like that. Where is she? I don't know. No one seems to know. Can't you find out? I'll see what I can do about it. But you've got to dough your end of the line. Don't tell anybody about my being here. Hey, Terry. You got a million dollars? Yep, and I see you're making your picks on the Fox. Tense electronic music. You know it's free to play and fans who pick right win one million dollars of my money. Uh, pick the outcomes of six games by one Easter. My money that Fox gave me to for this. <laughs> Real swag buck users. Want some swag bucks, baby? <clears throat> What did I tell you? And, and this is a piece of advice. Any in, any website that has a commercial is bullshit. Because what's the last eBay commercial you saw? What's the last Amazon commercial you saw? Right? Like, good websites don't need commercials. This probably is. He barely got any face on. I don't know who's attacking him. I don't know what's happening. Chuck, I'm holding you responsible for that. 
trip, get in touch with your suppliers. Arrange for an open line of credit. It's impossible. Nothing is impossible. They will not listen to me. You don't have a choice. They won't listen to you. Let me talk to them. Otherwise, we close shop. It's that simple. I will think about it. I can't get over it. How did you convince Griff? Well, let's just say that I made an offer that uh, he couldn't refuse. Don't steal lines from better movies than you. Mm-hmm. All right, so you apparently Chief of Trump Super Staff got corona. Eliminate them all Wait. together. <clears throat> what about Chuck? Chuck? He won't even go to the John without my permission. Never take anything for granted. Maybe I don't take anything for granted. Not even you. I know what I'm doing. What if Griff can prove that Chuck was really behind it? He won't have to prove it. Who plays Batman? I don't even really like. I played Mario's Fundamentals, nigga. I don't know how to play backgammon I still. I don't either. I have no idea how to play backgammon. I don't play it and don't know how to play it. <clears throat> I've watched it played. I still don't know how to play it. The meeting is in set, but I don't have the exact details yet. When will you know? That's the problem. Grip isn't taking any chances. It could be any time, any place. Great. Another 48-hour red alert. I'll get word to you as soon as anything is definite. Beats place? Mm-hmm. I'll have everyone ready. At a moment's notice. The way Grip's playing it, that's just about all you get. I gotta go. I think Bruno's on to me. Oh, yes. About Bonnie Carter. You talk to Chain. He knows. Sorry to put you through this, but we need you to identify the body. We found her in the river. Bonnie dear? I don't know. We're about to find out. <laughs> My body is like... Tense drum music. <gasps> I guess so. <laughs> now she's out for revenge! Wandering in the rain. Just running around like an idiot. That's what you do, running around the Philippines like a dumb dumb. Oh, look at how cool he is with his butterfly knife. It's open. Susie, what's the matter? Bitch, he might have been a lot of killer. What are you doing? I'm swear to God. Cat come from? Cat! Like, go. I'm a cat! I don't know if you were paying attention when it started. Just watch this. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Please. Like, somebody threw that cat. <clears throat> Cat is like, yeah, fuck this place. I'm gonna break everything. I mean, but that's a cat's normal reaction to life in general. Fuck this place. I'm gonna break everything. This bitch ain't got no money. I should keep getting stilettos. Also, why has he got so many perfume bottles? He's a single man. He's very full of himself. He's also got a mirrored ceiling. 
mean, I feel like that's something every every straight white man should have. Is it? Well, I mean, because if I'm on top, you can watch me fuck you. Make it extra hard. Yeah, they're gonna bang a bit. They're gonna bang. Oh, I want that cork fucking lamp. This nigga got pink mood lighting. Oh my god. Counterpoints lighting. By lighting. 19, circa 1970. We already know she could cup jeans, so. Is that how you start getting the person naked? Yeah, you start with their shoes and massage their feet. Oh. It's like fucking Napoleon Dynamite. Why is everybody clothes so wrinkly in this? Damn, they got irons in the Philippines, nigga. Damn. Oh, no. Oh, are you doing a foot job? Is that foot what's going on? On my dick. You gotta cut her pants off. <laughs> yeah. You see a look on her face like, what is this weird shit? <laughs> you just gonna cut my pants? Nigga, I don't have no money. You still owe me five hundred dollars, and now you owe me pants. <laughs> this is not a rape event. This is consensual sex. That's real weird. I, I wish a nigga. I wish you would cut some of my good Primark jeans, nigga. You know, good well how I react to that. And, and is this sexy? <laughs> yeah. Is it? <laughs> like her, her jeans all stuffed up into her fucking crotch? Yeah, this is sexy, boy. Nice butt you got there. You showed your butt for this too, lady? Goddamn. <laughs> this is when we stop having... The moment you start tearing up my shit is the moment we stop having sex. It's gonna be the second bra she's lost to a knife. <laughs> yeah. Or a scythe. But get your blood up. That's that's probably why you're doing it. Get y'all scared and an adrenaline rush. And he touches your your soft pointy pillows. <laughs> what did we hear somebody call breast sweat? Okay. <laughs> now she's got her own weird shit. Shit, I want to do. Carly can either confirm or deny whether people are into this, I guess. I. <laughs> yeah, people is into this. Like. I guess. This is the jump off for a thousand pornos, nigga. Like. That's right. Slap me in a dick, too. For this, she got butterball naked for this. Time to cut his things off, cut his socks or his slippers off, too. Still wearing like something. Did you get that knife <laughs> close to my dick? Yeah, no, I'm good on that. <laughs> He's about to fucking come. He's making his O face already. I don't want to see his man area. I don't want to see it. Pull it out, Filipino movie. We kind of saw some of his pad and pubes there. That's right. Show it to me. His pale, pasty butt crack. <laughs> Hell yeah. Every day. Back. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. That is a lot more man ass than I needed to see. 
None of this, please. She got straight butterball for this. Yeah, she is. He airy as fuck. <laughs> she fucking a yeti. A skinny yeti. <laughs> Like, they clearly have not entered each other yet, and they're already like... <gasps> I'm reminded of the sex scene from Team America. I can feel the blood pulse inside your head. What? That's gross. Who's... So good. So good. Who says shit like that? <laughs> oh, I can't wait to fuck you tonight! <laughs> You idiot. You know, here I thought you had some smarts. But no, you can't even get rid of a body without it turning up for the whole world to see. All right, all right, look, so I blew it. But there's no way they can trace that body back to us. I don't like it. The meeting is all set for tonight. I'll yeah, call you just fucked the guy that, gotcha. like, dumped your sister's body. No. And you knew that Maybe was a possibility. This way. The police will be preoccupied trying to solve the murder. It'll give them something to do while we go ahead with a meeting. So if y'all really gotta know what I'm doing, I'm on point right now. Leave the knife for me. There's a lot more okay. to think, and it's it's worse than this. Keep it short and sweet. It'll have to be. Grips found the yeah, meeting out porn. of the blue, and it's set for. Listen, you it's gotta search where you gotta search. Josie and Yelena, if you want to catch them all together. Are you sure about that? <laughs> about Bonnie. Jeff killed her. She was gonna do a story on Eric's old setup. Did you know? Look, I know what you're thinking, but don't do it. You leave Chuck to me. He'll be behind bars within the hour, I promise you. Just what I need. She's gotta be stopped. I'll get her. Time to go kill the guy I just had sex with. You wanna go to a San Francisco bar? Mm -hmm. That's the place to call, baby. Not only that, like, like you did some weird shit with him too. You got freaky, deaky. Like you didn't just fuck him. Like you did knife play with him. Talked about the Stop. blood pulse in his head. Stop. You already checked that room, bitch. I know how you feel, but I won't let you throw away your life like this. Yeah, the direction... I don't know if you're talking about the movie in general, the sex scene, but all of it. Good job, so. Also, like... Tony! You're wearing a gee? Apply to to I'll brown cops in other countries. Now. Good. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist the challenge. Oh, well. But I mean right now, and it's got to be on my terms. Whatever you say. Oh, she's gonna sign up for a death match against Chuck. He's on his way up. Well, then you know what to do. 
The supplies are here. They're all waiting at the club. Good. Dead Filipino people blood and shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just gonna fuck me with him? Yeah. Ugh. Well, so you really just gonna kill this thing and hit somebody all the way? Take his bracelet. And then I lied to you. I purposely ripped off my own shipment. Deceived you into thinking that I needed to work out some sort of direct credit arrangement with you. My apologies, gentlemen, for that little misrepresentation. But it was the only way that I knew how to remove grip and deal directly with you. Seeing your pet live 100%, there's nothing better. The right food unlocks that life for your pet. Try our right food finder today at Petco.com and be confident you're helping your pet live 100%. Helping them wake you up. You aim Let's high slobber all over your face. You do. Looking at you, you funny. Standards. Mm -hmm. After all, it's your body, your life, and your future. Bitch. Shouldn't the same go for your birth control? Yeah. If you're looking for low hormone pregnancy, pregnancy, pregnancy prevention, aim mm. high and go low. Meet Kylina, the smallest, lowest hormone five-year IUD that's highly effective and reversible anytime. In case your plans change, well, don't use Kylina if you have a pelvic. In case my plans change, and this nigga wants to milk a baby himself. PID. If you have pelvic or stomach pain, or if Kalina comes out, baby. talk to your healthcare professional. I'm good. Kalina may attach all these to or go through the uterus. Saying, pregnancy with Kalina is uncommon, but can I want to carry it here in my loaf. Pregnancy or fertility, <laughs> ovarian cysts may occur, but usually disappear. Thanks, baby. Bleeding and spotting may increase hey, in the first three to six you months. You got some carrying dips. Periods over time. You ready? Shorter, lighter, or may stop. Widen up that pelvis a little bit. The STDs. I'm complimenting you. Yeah. I am. Yeah, I love you and your body. I love seeing your body, touching your body, being close to your body. You're beautiful. You're a beautiful man. She just called it a loaf. <laughs> I love loaves. Meatloaf. Loaves of bread. Are you referring to Meatloaf, the singer? Or just All of it. All of it. My famous strawberry loaf. Mm -hmm. I love, I love. Oh, we need to start something great. Hey, Terry. Hey, Dominic. You got a million dollars? Yep. And I see you making your picture. I love you. All the lopes you got. See, you out here taking compliments is fucking is me being mean. You describe me as a loaf, I'd be happy. Because I'm a love loaf. To the arena of death. Loaf is my love language. I'm sure you're all going to enjoy this. What is this guy doing in a fez? Why is your most, grandpa here? The most interesting man in the world. Different. This will be the first time a woman will be fighting in this arena. She'll be fighting Chuck Mangione. She brought her Arnie Sticks, even though we've seen one scene with her with Guru. She knows what she's doing.
What is this? Bonnie's my sister. Hey, I don't want to fight you. Okay, Parker. There's got to be a better way. It was, par it was Parker and Nell. No, okay, fine. You know that. Hey, look, I'm sorry. What can I say? Oh man, next time you fuck up, I'm just gonna whoop out the sticks, nigga. Like, that R and E, nigga. Like, it's going down. Wait, is that a special effect? What? Oh shit, I just want 10 seconds. Let's see. No Filipino movie, somebody didn't crash through a window. Though. That's how you do it. That's how movies should be. You know what? Like this is a good ass movie. I'm I'm not even mad. Oh, what, what just happened? He just kicked the baby out of her. No, you just he punched her. Just kicked, punched her bloody. <laughs> just kicked her. Look at that old man. <laughs> nah, we going back. I want you to watch the old man try to get out. And also, I can watch that man crash through that window a dozen times. What fight choreography, nigga? Goddamn! <laughs> Check the old man. He said, "What? We getting up?" <laughs> I gotta go. Let me, let me scoot by here. <laughs> yeah. Ray said, "Fuck this." <laughs> Fuck my shirt. <laughs> Fucking AK-47s or okay, whatever. Okay, 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 no. Ray. Ray's playing the Filipino Bruce Lee. Yes, and he is killing the game, Ray. The faces, the moves! This movie should have been about him! You need a white girl to carry this. I want to see more Ray movies. Like, he's clearly got some movies where he's the star. I want to see that. I mean, her moves are actually good, though. Like, it's just clear that they're not choreographed well, so, like, they're clearly not actually hit. Like, you can tell they're not hitting anything, like, very clearly. Yeah. But I, now that, I, like, I'm actually seeing the movie in full, like... Her moves are good. Like I believe she's a karate champion. But, like, yeah, no. Clearly, whoever she's got some agility on her that looks good. Like when they when they do go wide and she's like ducking under shit. Like that that shit looks amazing. But and clearly they didn't have a 
their their director isn't great at shooting the guns. You know, like, cause this isn't lit very well, like... An action scene needs to be fully lit, you know? You want to see every sweat, just every bead of sweat just glisten off of you. And the fights look better, like, a lot of the times when <clears throat> somebody's in front of the other person, so you can't actually yeah. see that they're not really hitting each other. Yeah, they don't have the camera movement or even the editing for the quick cuts to, like... To really get the type of action that that takes this movie from B movie to like B plus movie, to where it's like you know. Also, who is Ray? I don't like, he's know. He's just a guy at the bar when she first showed up, and they become best of friends, and he's he's so invested in this. Like, what is his motivation for any of this? Oh, shit. Again, I feel like Ray is famous in the Philippines, so people forgave that when they saw this movie. And I think it's dumb they made this movie about her because, yeah, she's good, but she really would be a good secondary character. You know, maybe she she's... Maybe she is here for revenge and Ray helps her to, like... See where that makes her as bad as them, you know? With a few rewrites, this movie's like good, good. Like, it's good right now, but it could be taken to like the next level. Also, like, are you trying to make him more sympathetic? He just like spared her and she attacked him from behind. <laughs> could do with some dialogue. Like, I realize they're fighting really hard and it's difficult for her especially to, like, deliver lines and, you know, and Parker's real daddy clearly <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I'm just saying it. It's clearly, like, um, into it, but he should be, like, apologizing to her as, she's, as they're fighting, like, talking about his motivation for killing her and, you know, talking about how he feels about her and that's that's how you do this fight scene, right? It's a trope because it works. It's a weapon for defense, otherwise it'd have sharp edges. Okay, 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 guys. Hello, Comrade Cud. Uh, yes. Uh, though they're not doing a very good job of villainizing him, honestly. No, they're not. Like, like he, he actually seems like a far more sympathetic villain than, than they clearly Hey, him we to were be. getting to it! I know, I know, we're getting there. Um... That's why they should have done the trope. Because then you leave that moral ambiguity of, okay, he's trying to, to turn that corner. It wasn't her right to take his life. Like, you start playing that yeah, Like, angle. she's not coming up as very heroic here. Because no. she, he spared her, like, three times. And she's just going to fucking kill his ass. Like, yeah, I know he killed your sister. But, like, he didn't kill you when he had the chance, like, three times. And you're just gonna kill him. <clears throat> like I said, this movie could do with some rewrites. <laughs> this is Daredevil. Yes. <clears throat> I guess he didn't see that one coming. Pa -dum -pa -pa -dum -pa -dum. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he just murdered. Just he's just blind now. All right, so let's let's see this again because yeah. this is amazing. This is an eye gouging good time. Like, she disrespects the weapon because they literally told her, like, it's a weapon for defense. That effect, though. Can we get a close-up? I want to see his fucking face. He's 
He's yeah, gonna get a law degree. Come the back. Dare, come the daredevil back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Stop. Yeah, you're, I'm dying. Um. <laughs> we don't need that one movie, dang it! Okay, we're definitely watching this at some point, though. Is it? You yeah. don't need no more movie. It's done. I mean, are they wrong? No! They only could have fucked it up from here. Alright, I'm giving my score on eight. Eight. Off top. Like, that's my score. Um, normally we would do scores later, but like... Okay, so let's talk about kind of the goods, and we'll talk about the bads. Well, hold on. Let's before we do that. You got 15 seconds before they stop playing this. All right, let me um. Who directed this movie? This one I saw something about fucking Corman being involved somewhere. Maybe that's the production company though. So I'm I'm gonna okay, if you're Go ahead, baby. We're gonna talk about the goods and we're talking about the bads. Um So the good in this film is it's insanity. I, I, you don't know from moment to moment what's happening. Um, I love that. He's been in a lot of shit. Yeah, we're going to watch every fucking thing he's been in. Um, you don't know what's happening from scene to scene, so you're invested the whole way through. I feel like... <laughs> it was include nude kickboxing and topless in public. Yep. Yeah. Um, I feel like the scenes are... You know, from a technical standpoint, it's, that's where all of its weaknesses come in, is technically, you know. Um, in terms of just what it is, you know, it's a fun romp. It's a movie that certainly, you know, would share a place with um, a Miami Connection or a Samurai Cop. You know, it's that caliber of bad movie. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's one of those bad movies, too, that, like, again, one thing that we're all about here and that di I think differentiates us um, is discovery. We want to be, you know, we want to be in that initial group who review it and see it. And, you know, if we can be the first to a movie, we're happy about it. If Cinema Snob did it, you know, then, I mean, he's done so many things. Cinema Snob has been on YouTube since YouTube started. Yeah. So he's he's has a lot of content. But if we can sort of be the first little ones to, to something, we're, we're excited about it. And I feel like this is like the next, you know, Miami, you know, fucking Miami connection. This this thing has everything in it. And it is, the story is nonsensical. Um, in that nonsensicalness, you get some unique things like she's fucking the guy who killed her sister and... Which she knew that was a possibility. Like, what the fuck? Like, she lo like, the thing that, the reason that this isn't, like, a good movie is because the interesting storytelling, they didn't realize what they were writing. The interesting storytelling mechanics there weren't played up. So, for example, you know, seeing her be torn about the idea that, yeah, I, I know that this guy could have possibly killed my, my sister, but I'm falling for him. Seeing him you know, be tormented by his love for her. Seeing more of, you know, I wanted to know how Eric, the big boss, was going to take the death of his woman, you know. Um, maybe finding out that she was an agent and how that kind of affected him emotionally. Um, I wanted to know more about the crew back at the, you know, at the, at the San Francisco bar. Big Pirate Man, how did he get there? And Ray and all the rest of them. Um... I want to know more about Cop Guy. I want to know more about Fez Criminal. They introduce 
a lot of characters who I think have a lot character wise to bring to this. Yeah, these are some good keywords. Yeah, this is this is you, I mean, you need all, to write the correct. IMDB page for this. They are all correct keywords. Um they ha- they introduce a lot of interesting characters, I think, and a lot of interesting concepts, but they never capitalize on them. Excuse me. They never really capitalize on them. Um and I think that sh- I think that that is a failure of the writers. Um, the director failed because he wasn't great at shooting the action, and so the editor didn't have a whole lot to work with. That's really clear. Um, yeah, so the sex scene was not originally in the movie. Yeah. So probably in the original like script, she didn't have sex with him. That's why it's so fucking weird. Like, I mean, I still think it's weird the way that she kills him at the end like that after he, like, tries to spare her and he's like, that's a plot hole. But clearly, like, Corman added this in, like, because he was like, ah, oh, it needs more sex. Well, and he's, he's fundam- fundamentally, Roger Corman is an exploitation producer. That's what he does. That's mm-hmm. what he's always done. Mm-hmm. And so he needed, you know, he was riding on her sexuality. I think that the the weird that that near rape scene was interesting. Well, see, it had interesting implications because that's the first time we see her kill, mm-hmm. right? So the implication there, because we never talk about it, we don't get a chance to see how that affects the character emotionally. The biggest problem with the film is that. Each character just kind of wanders from set piece to set piece without there being an exploration of who these people are in relation to their environment, in relation to um, their, who, you know, in relation to their environment and to other characters. You're going to say something you just found out your eyes got big. The fight scene where her brow was sliced off was a legitimate accident while filming. (laughs) Which... I actually, I mean, I I didn't know that at the time, but, like, looking back, her face looked legitimately surprised. (laughs) Like, so that guy almost cut her with that fucking thing and cut her bra off, and they just left it in, because they're like, well, that's great. Yeah. A legitimate accident. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think that this movie... Again, there's a lot of things that could take this movie from just a shitty B movie to like a good B movie. Um, but again, I mean, it's already a good B. Movie. It's good, but it's not like this could be like B plus A minus. Had we had one, had the movie been longer. Two, had we had a little more time with the characters. I think that again, we rush her from just set piece to set piece. There's no real like. We're not seeing her bond with the characters at the bar and be, develop the friendship with them. What about learning how to fucking do Arnie's? Right, like, like learning. We literally to do- just see her like she gets the sticks from the old guy and she's like, <sighs> and then that's it. Yeah, we never see her training. We never know if she's continued training. Like, even if you're gonna do that sort of like rush through with it to imply that she's getting into it you need to at least have her practicing maybe like in a set piece where like they're all sitting around and discussing how they're going to do certain plans and stuff she's just sitting she's just practicing right um it's little things like that that don't cost you money but that are about the language of filmmaking night crowley night crowley I i hope you enjoyed it honey it's about the language of filmmaking um, and... I mean, you know, it's it's a trope, but throw a montage in there. Yeah. Um, but montage, regardless, you know, tropes exist for a reason because they work. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're already making this movie, then you're already relying on some tropes. Um, again, I think the trope of him trying to talk her through 
that the 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 fight scene and, and professing his love and you know trying to say I'm sorry and and her you know maybe being more angry being more angry and then just killing him I think that having dialogue there would have made it a lot more interesting or you know if you like if you want her to be the good guy and you want him to be the bad guy then you have him like you know apologizing professing his love whatever and then like when she like try like it's like she's gonna spare him then he like Gives her a leg sweep, kicks her out, and then, like, you know, it's back into it. Then she can kill him, and we'd feel good about it. Right. Because he betrayed her. <clears throat> I... But, like, I don't feel like she's a hero at the end of this. No, I don't. And I feel... But, see, here's the thing that's interesting, though. I think that we could have... Yes, she's a martial arts instructor, but, like... She, like, literally said she didn't know anything about it, and she, like, went to, like, a guru over there to learn. And, like, then it's just like, eh. Yeah, double eye socket murder, not very heroic. and that, that But it was a great <laughs> effect. And I'm going to tell you something, cuz. That should go on a t-shirt, honey. Yeah. Um. But. Yeah, I mean, you know. But, yeah, like, it was. I think you could have played it so that there is the ambiguity of. I think you could have played up that ambiguity more of, is she a hero? Yeah. I mean, you can certainly do that. Like, you can certainly have an anti-hero. You know, you can do like a Charles Bronson, you know, Death Wish kind of thing where he's he's not really a hero. He's kind of a bad guy. But, you know, like, you, I still, think, you still watch I, it to like watch I think kill that people. And... Fundamentally, what we're saying is there are a lot of elements that could have been included that didn't, that weren't, again, that, that weren't a, a matter of a constraint of money. But just about creating that language of film, right? And um, I think they missed some opportunities there. But honestly, it's a solid eight for me in terms of, of what it is. It's fun. It's got, you know, it's got, instead of it being, it's not crazy. There are moments where you kind of settle in. And then the best, to me, the best bad movies are moments that, that is when the movie kind of lures you in. It's a movie. And then it does something insane. And then you're just shocked for a while. And then you get lulled back, and then something insane happens again. And that it's, was this movie, right? You know, you you can't be city Dra city dragon is so much all the time, but it's got the campiness and it's got a it's got a lot in its favor that makes you that takes you along for that ride. Some movies that. This movie struck a perfect balance because we've had that where we've had two or three really insane moments in a movie, but the rest of the movie was just boring. This was a movie that we were, okay, we were chugging along, chugging along, we're enjoying it, but then it's punctuated nicely by these moments of just sheer insanity and, and legitimate accidents. And yeah. Double eyeball murder, you know? Fucking weird knife play sex scene. Yeah, like, that was it. Like, you know Corman choreographed that whole thing, like... Um, so I would say, like, um, <clears throat> I was, I was constantly entertained by it in various ways. Like, even when, like, it got to, like, kind of some slow parts or whatever, like, just the scenery was gorgeous. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, God. When they're up in the mountains, I was just staring. Like, even in the cities, like, the little, like, yeah. you know, the vendor stalls yeah, the, and all the, that. Yeah, like, the little even, market was, was Yeah, adorable. like, it's all, like, you know, it's all very pretty, like, Filipino shit. Um... I loved everybody's costuming. The, the outfits costuming was were great. great. Like I was wanting everybody's shirt, you know. Yeah, and I loved like just be like the club. Everybody's like, you know, their their uniform at the club was really interesting and beautiful. And I liked, you know, the geese were really, you know, the geese weren't just like everybody's got the same gi on basically. Everybody's gi was different, very tailored toward their personality. You could, you know, sort of look at their. It was very interesting. It had it had those movie, you know, that kind of movie aesthetic in that way. So there's always something to keep my attention, whether it was, like, the scenery, the weird, like, crazy moments, the, the like, because a lot of the other fights, like, you know, besides, like, the couple of, like, crazy ones, like, the, the nudity one and then the, the final one, like, were, um, they weren't great. Like, the choreography was definitely poor, um, but... Most of the people involved seem to like be legitimate martial artists. Like clearly, she she is a real like karate champ. Obviously, Ray is. I don't know what his background is, but clearly, he's been in a lot of martial arts movies. Um, but even like you know the 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 fucking bad guy, whatever he was, clearly seemed to know what he was doing. I think um, not the main bad guy, but the the Chuck. Parker's dad. 
Um, <laughs> That's how we call them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but even like you know a lot of just the random hoods and stuff, they all seemed like they they were good at fighting. Just the choreography wasn't great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think I think generally like. That's that's the that's probably the one thing that was very surprising was they very much paid for real martial artists, mm -hmm. um, even in minor scenes. Even the minor sort of toughs were re very good martial artists. Except for like the the guys in the rape the rape fight scene, or I mean they didn't they weren't terrible, but they clearly were. And they weren't martial artists. Yeah, they were like white guys in L.A. Yeah, like, you know. Um, um, but you know they had their own moments. Outside of that, I think again, the the delivery of dialogue was poor. Generally, yeah, and the sound was pretty poor. Right, in general. and the it, so the music the, was on point. I love the music, music. Was great. The emoting was bad. People could not emote worth a damn in this. Yeah, movie. most of the actors were not good actors. They weren't good at the the dialogue. For me, they weren't good at dialogue delivery or emoting. But they, they were good kinetic actors. Yes. Right? They all use their bodies really, really well. Um, I think a lot of the, you know, I again, one thing Corman understood that I think, you know, Hollywood never got was it's always cheaper to find people in the country you're filming in who have these skills, who want to be in a movie, than it is to fly people, a bunch of white people in to do it. Um, and that adds to... The variety you have guys who have different fight styles you have a lot of the background actors were actually emoting much much like ray and a lot of the filipino actors were emoting much better than the american actors yeah the uh the the i mean he went a little over the top sometimes but the grip the, yeah the other bad guy he was good he like, was good he i was, enjoyed him he was a compelling villain like i was kind of upset when he died mm -hmm. um i I liked Grip. I liked, um, like I said, I liked, the, I liked the old man Guru. I would have liked to have seen more of him. And it was interesting that they did not subtitle or translate any of that. It was just like, he's just, he's talking, he's talking, and you're gonna, you're gonna have to wonder what he said. And I think, again, a better writer can pull that off because there's supposed to be that feeling, those looks in her eyes, the way that the actors react. That's supposed to tell you a better what director, he's saying. probably. Yeah, and better, better mm -hmm. director, better, better writing, and a better actor. Yeah. Right, all that trifecta can get away with that. Um, I think it was like I said. I would like I would if I had a billion dollars, I'd remake every movie, and I'd start with this one. I would rewrite this movie as this. I would make. Her, I would, you know, I find a, a young girl, a young woman, young girl, a young woman who was Cynthia Rothrock esque, who was a martial artist who can pull off the moves, and a director who can shoot the action. I take it back to the Philippines. I think it's a great location. Um, I hate to say, I take it to Manila. Um, I hate to say just the Philippines because, as Comrade Cud points out, you know, they say like it's one big filming lot. Um, I don't know that it was in Manila. Like, they did say the name of the town they were in. Yeah. I forget what it was, but, like, I don't know if that's the actual town they filmed in. or. But they did show, like, a, a sign, so it probably was. Um, Start with an O. I I would definitely use that as a location. But I would I would keep the story, the narrative of her coming to the Philippines to find her, her sister and hooking up with Ray. But Ray is... The, I'd make Ray the main character. Ray, Ray is kind of you know is is with her all the time. You know, is with her and trying to you know finagle her into the culture as well as you know trying to teach her kind of the local ways, especially in the martial artist, uh, especially in martial artistry. Um, and he can see in her the sort of like need for revenge. He's kind of maybe a little romantically invested in her, but she's more interested in Chuck and, you know, she, you know, trying to talk him out of, you trying to talk her out of it and, and trying, you know, desperately to get this character to, to not take revenge. Um, and maybe with the end scene with her and, you know, the end scene would be her yes, fighting. Yes, that, that is it, Could Yeah, that's it. Um, the end scene would be her fighting um chuck but there's a simultaneous fight going there'd be like a through shot where you know you could see them wide fight her fighting chuck and then him and then ray fighting eric and she's you know ray spares eric's life hoping that 
it'll give you the example, you know, this police comments around them and hoping that it'll give the example, but she kills Chuck instead and the police haul her off and the kind of the last scene is him upsettedly watching her being arrested and whatnot. So there's, there's, you know, there's that tension. We can explore characters' motivations. We can explore these characters a little more. Um, but we also still have the cool fighting. We also still have the the drama. We have all the other stuff. Um, but as is, this movie is a really good one. Um, it's it really pulls out from that stinker I picked last week. Um, it's probably the best like martial arts movie we've seen, other than City Dragon, which you can't call which it. Is a, a whole a whole it's a category thing. onto itself. Um, I, mean, I guess Black Estapa was kind of a martial arts movie, kind of, and um. Was that other one that we watched? Did we watch that for the dump? Um, was it like Hot Dynamite or something like that? It was like, it was the black guy who was in, I think, Thailand maybe? or Hot, No, we did not. <clears throat> what was it called? Hot Potato. Hot Potato. Yeah, we watched that on our own. Yeah. Which, that was a good one. I think this was better. No, this was better. But it was similar, like, you know, same time era, I think late 70s or so. Yeah. And, had some weird, like, they were trying to make it like, is it a drama action movie or is it a comedy action movie? Like, yeah, it was sort of like, <sighs> if Black Dynamite and Jim Belushi from Road ha from Animal House and, you know, the Thai lady from this and, like, you know, fucking, there was another guy, I forget who yeah. he was. Uh, if they if they all had a movie together, what would that be like? And, he was like the cool guy, I guess, kind of. Yeah, the, the cool American. I, you know, what what would that be like if if John John and John Johnson? You yeah, know? there you go. Uh, and it was weird as shit. It had these weird moments where like they're having that big fight scene, but they keep like <clears throat> basically like timing out to fucking talk to each other during the fight, and it's like or when he winds up the little toy car. Yeah, it was fucking weird. Or when he marries that teenage girl. Yeah, that's a movie we might do for the dump at some point. I don't know. It was a good movie. I don't think it's as good as this, but it's it'll be fun to riff on. I think it's because it's it's very strange. And it's been long enough since we've seen it. Yeah. Um. But no, that was, you know, like I said, I gave my score. I I already had seven in my head, but that death took it to eight. That was a whole point in and of itself. Like, um. I think I'm going with a nine. Wow, that's 8.5. That's a lot. I, I enjoyed it. It was, I feel like this is like a kind of, you know, obviously it's not the top of the heap, but it's. I mean, I feel like it's up there. It's I a, do feel it's like a, it's up there. I feel like it's a perfect. But, but like, here's, here's what I'm saying, though. Um, here's, here's what I'm saying, though. And, and we do do this, so sometimes we do, this. We, do we do. Um, we might revise our scores after we. Is it better? What would 8.5 put it at? Is it better than Urge to Kill? It's better than the Chuck E. Cheese movie. But it's better than that. Right? But it's not, but I'm telling you, but I'm saying this to you as your wife and partner in this. It is not better than Urge to Kill. Urge to Kill is insanity from fucking from from the moment it starts to the moment it ends it was filmed on someone's consumer grade home camera probably 10 minutes at a time and cut together on a fucking well, it was never released yeah and cut together on a fucking uh uh commodore 64 like it I mean, it might as well have been made on a Nintendo. It was fucking in sheer insanity, and it was great. Like, I, I can't, I can't, in good conscience, um, say it was better than Urge to Kill. All right, I'll give it an eight, and it'll be tied with Urge to Kill. Okay. Because this is more of a cohesive film. Yeah. Than Urge to Kill is like Urge to Kill is almost not a movie. Like it's almost, but it's it's amazing, but. It's so, like, this is an actual movie that you can understand, you can watch and be like, okay, there's a plot, it went from A to B, boom, you know. Urge to Kill is up there with, like, Monster or Go Go, like, just some fucking movie that, that clearly was just, like, stitched together out of fucking insanity drugs and various bits and pieces, like, it, it, 
it doesn't make any sense. It's fucking... Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> so, because we forgot that it was our 30th episode, uh, this would make it... Four. Because we forgot that it was our 30th episode... Um, it is time to read off the list. How many movies do we have on the list? Now it's 31. Remember, that's not including the one that's... That's, that's including... The, um, that's including that. That's including what? The, the one that we didn't rank, yeah. Yeah, that's including that. 31? Right, so okay, this is episode 32. Because... Um, what did we... Oh, wait, no, this might be 33. <sighs> okay, but we... Wait, no, hold on, sorry. So, okay, remember... This is, um... Remi oh, what's it's called? The anime was... The anime was one three... Movie, two episodes. Three, no, three episodes. Two. Three. No, we watched the first two parts in one episode and then the third, the third one in another. Yeah, okay. So this is 32, which I got right. I numbered it 32, even though everything else, like... Yeah, we've seen <laughs> 31 movies, but had 32 episodes. Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's the list. Um, I'll also do who picked it. Kill a Season, Lady Columbia... City Dragon, Great Pirate Solomon. There is to Kill, Great Pirate Solomon. Firecracker, Great Pirate Solomon. Chuck E. Cheese in the Galaxy 5000, Lady Columbia. Murdoch Scramble Parts 1 through 3, uh, Great Pirate Solomon. Space Rage, Lady Columbia. The Apple, Great Pirate Solomon. The Black Gestapo, Lady Columbia. Blood Rain, Lady Columbia. The Bridey Bought Online, Lady Columbia. Gathering of Heroes, Legends of the Seven Swords, Lady Columbia. Visitors of the Night, Great Pirate Solomon. A Wind Named Amnesia, Great Pirate Solomon. Galaxy Express 999, Lady Columbia. Die Hard Dracula, Great Pirate Solomon. I, I honestly, I feel like Galaxy 999 is low. I feel like it should be higher. So we only gave it 4.75. I feel like it should be higher than that. Inseminoid, Great, uh, Lady Columbia. A Talking Cat. Great Pirate Solomon, Mind Ripper, aka The Hills Have Eyes 3, mm. Great Pirate Solomon, Two Saves, mm. Lady Columbia, Land of Doom, Lady Columbia, That was a stinker, Assassin 33 AD, Great Pirate Solomon, That was a stinker too, Before I Self Destruct, Lady Columbia, That was a shitty movie, Yeah, that was rough, Far Cry, Great Pirate Solomon, Megaforce, Lady Columbia, Joysticks, Lady You picked Col Megaforce? I, no, you picked Megaforce. Yeah. Sorry. So <clears throat> Megaforce, I'm sorry, it was Great Pirate Solomon. Joysticks, Lady Columbia. Star Raiders, Great Pirate Solomon. Legends of the Red Reaper, Great Pirate Solomon. And Andy the Talking Hedgehog, which is our only zero out of ten, uh, Lady Columbia. Uh, so I hold both the top and the bottom spots. Um, number 31 is unrated because it was actually too good for our show. We didn't know that at the time. Uh, and that is Brain Dead, chosen by Great Pirate Solomon. Yep. I mean, that was just an actual good movie, so we, we refused to rate it alongside the rest of the garbage that we watch. Mm -hmm. Which is not to say we don't enjoy some of the garbage we watch, but it was just a legitimately good movie. Um, it's like the New Zealand Evil Dead 2. If you guys are ever interested, um, the movies we've seen for Date Night Dumpster list is on uh, Letterbox. I am Lady Columbia, one word, um, on Letterbox, so you can go look that up. Um, I'm sure if you just typed in Date Night Dumpster, it would come up. Um, that's a public list, so you guys can go and comment and check it out. Um, if you ever want to see any of these movies on your own. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them now. Um, been doing this for so long, baby. This is our longest. So we tried the leftist couch. It didn't work out. But this is our longest running series. Probably because we started it in quarantine. Did we? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing this for... 32 weeks, I think. A little more because we missed, I think two episodes maybe in two weeks so 34 weeks which is uh, eight 
a little over eight months. Uh, here, well, let's. I think I think the first episode's still up on YouTube. Maybe. Shut up. Dracula. City Dragon. Doom. Where is it? You passed it. Did I? Oh. Yeah, okay. Go see the date on it. March 28th. Yep, so we did start it in quarantine. Okay. Told you. Good call, baby. Guess I can't even remember the before times that well. No, we don't remember the before times. God, that was in quarantine? Yeah. So weird. Yeah, so we stopped putting these on YouTube because a lot of them were getting claimed. Um, by who? By who, who knows. Yeah, it's all running together now. But, you, ain't, uh, you ain't lying, cut. It's all running together. Can't nobody remember the before times? But looks like Kill a Season's still up. Cause he ain't gonna claim that. Mm -mm. Before I self destruct. Did you pick two in a row? No. Or did I pick before I self destruct? No, I picked it, but the movie in between before I self destruct and um Kill a Season got Got claimed. Got claimed. Yeah, I think Legend of the Red Reaper is the last one that's up. I do have a lot of them saved. I might eventually try to get them onto YouTube. Um, some of the ones I don't think will get claimed, <clears throat> like Chuck E. Cheese. Um, I need to save more of them. I definitely lost a few entirely because they went off of, you know. Yeah, because Twitch is not good about that. Twitch doesn't save them forever. Um, but I lost a few, but, you know, I think I've still got most of them. Um, but, yeah. So, I guess that's us for tonight. Oh, boy. That was a lot of shit. It's a lot of shit. So... I'm done talking. I gotta get I I gotta get my drugs in me. I gotta get that. I gotta get to another planet. I gotta get to No Man's Sky. I got shit to do. I got farming to do. I gotta fucking make cryo pumps. I gotta get money, nigga. So I've been the Lady Columbia. He's been the Great Pirate Solomon. And we will be seeing you next Thursday for another episode of Date Night Dumpster. So that means we will be seeing you soon. Good night, good morning, and good afternoon. It'll be your turn to pick. Oh no! Good night. It's okay, cuz come see us next week, honey. Yeah, or you can always, you know, run back the VOD or whatever. Um, yeah. So we'll see y'all.